Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography, and I am super excited to announce the release of my latest script, Astro Image Detail, designed to help you sharpen your images with ease. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Now let's jump on in and learn how to download and use Astro Image Detail. Astro Image Detail is a script that I designed in order to help sharpen your image a lot easier. It utilizes a couple of sliders, the ability to denoise your image, show a preview, and simply execute. But how do you get this script? If you already have my repository link downloaded, the next time you load PixInsight, you should get a notification in the top left of your window that states that there's updates available. Simply click on that notification. You'll get a window that pops up that shows all of the available updates. Click Select All, OK, and then exit out of PixInsight. If for some reason you don't get the notification in the top left of your window, go to Resources, Updates, and check for updates. That'll prompt PixInsight to check for any repository updates, and you should get the window that pops up that has all of the available updates for your repositories. Again, click Select All, OK, and then exit out of PixInsight. Now, if you don't have my repository link, I'll have my link in the description of this video, and that repository link is a package that contains all of my scripts. Another way that you can get the link is go to my website, hiddenlight-photography.com, go to PixInsight Scripts, and you'll see the repository link here, along with instructions on how to install it. The easiest way would be to click on the repository link, which will bring up a new tab, and what you're gonna do is click in the URL bar, and then we'll go ahead and copy that repository link. We'll go back into PixInsight, go to Resources, Updates, Manage Repositories, and you'll see the Manage Update Repositories window pop up. Click Add, and then paste the repository link into the Add PixInsight Repository window. And then you'll click OK. Now, I already have this repository link loaded, so I'm not going to do it again. But once you click OK, you'll see the repository link in the Manage Update Repositories window. Once you see the link here, click OK. And then what we're going to do is go to Resources, Updates, and check for updates. This will prompt PixInsight to check for any repository updates. And it should pick up the uh, repository link that you just put in. I don't have any updates available, so I'm going to get this window here, but what you'll end up seeing is that window I spoke about, which shows all of the available repository updates. Click Select All, click OK, and then simply exit out of PixInsight. Now, once you exit out of PixInsight, you may or may not get a window that pops up in the middle of the screen that states, do you want to allow this application to make changes to your device? If you get that, click Yes, and PixInsight will update. Now, once it's done updating, PixInsight should automatically restart. If it doesn't, just go ahead and reload PixInsight. And from there, when you go to Script, you'll see HLP, and you'll have all of my scripts. One of them will be Astro Image Detail. Now, let's do a quick tour of Astro Image Detail. This script is designed to work with um, stretched starless image. So once you're done stretching your image and the stars are removed, that's when you want to use Astro Image Detail. Now there are a couple of sliders here. There's large scale structure and small scale structure. Now what these do is actually adjust the wavelets of your image. And if you've seen my tutorial where I go over multi-scale linear transform, that's actually exactly what this is doing. The large scale structure operates multi-scale linear transform and small scale structure operates multi-scale median transform. One adjusts large scale, one adjusts small scale. 
And the way we used to do this would be go to process all processes and multi-scale linear transform and multi-scale median transform. What we would do is we would add a bias layer and then we would start setting parameters for each layer. And then once we were done, we would go ahead and apply that to the image. We no longer need to do that. When we're in the script here, these two sliders operate those two processes. And what the sliders do, as we move it left, we are actually lowering the bias values. And when we move it right, we're raising the bias values, thus giving us more or less sharpening for each structure set. Now, the default settings, five for large scale and one for small scale, this is ideal for one shot color. And I have some notes here. A factor of five on large scale slider is ideal for both one shot color and mono with a two time drizzle. For small scale structure though, uh, one shot color, one is a good starting point. And then a mono with two time drizzle, you can get away with five. But this is very dependent on your data set. So make sure to adjust these as needed and as you see fit and until you like the results. Now, anytime we sharpen an image, we are adding noise. So we wanna make sure to keep that noise in check. So if you have noise exterminator installed, I have uh, a checkbox here to apply noise exterminator. And then you can also adjust your denoise strength. I have a very minimal setting here. Um, if you've already done denoising with noise exterminator earlier in your process, you don't wanna use such a heavy touch. So I have a, a very light touch here, but you can adjust this as you see fit. Um, and then we have our show preview. Now when I'm sharpening, I like to really get in there and see what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a one-to-one -one, and then we'll click show preview. Now, with scripts, you can't have a live preview, so the script is gonna to have to run um, and then do basically a temporary image and then display that into the preview section. So sometimes, depending on your data, it can take a couple of seconds to do. Um, but once it's done here, and we see that's already on the noise exterminator process, um, once it's done, there we go, we can go ahead and expand the window and see what's going on. And here's our image. Now, I have not done any noise exterminator on this image yet. This is just stretched and curve transformation for contrast has been done. So we could see just a little bit of noise here. Now, this is a good opportunity to um, check out noise exterminator. Let's go ahead and bump this up just a little bit. Let's refresh the preview. It's gonna go ahead and run the script again really quick, and then you'll see some of this noise disappear once that preview updates. And that's the purpose of having Noise Exterminator here is it helps keep that noise in check as you are um, sharpening your image. So here we go, we could see some of that noise disappearing. Now for the sliders, if we don't want something to be done, if we don't want any large scale structure uh, sharpening, we can go ahead and just move the slider to zero. This will actually omit any large scale sharpening. Same thing with small scale structure. If we move that slider to zero, then we are omitting uh, any small scale structure sharpening. I'm gonna uncheck noise exterminator really quick and I'm gonna refresh the preview. And what we're gonna see here, this is the image before we did any sharpening. As we go ahead and um, increase these sliders, here we'll run just large scale sharpening. And here's the effect of that. And we can actually see the added noise. And then if we go ahead and add in some small scale structure sharpening, um, we'll refresh that preview and what we'll see is some 
small scale uh, items here get just a little bit sharper, a little bit more prominent. Um, again, when you're running one shot color, one is a good starting point. If your data allows, you can increase it, you can decrease it if you want. But here we go with large and small scale. And then let's go ahead and apply that noise exterminator back in because we can see the image getting pretty noisy from the sharpening. I'll go ahead and refresh that preview and we'll see that it already ran multi-scale linear. It's running multi-scale median. And then once it's done with that, it's gonna run noise exterminator. We'll see our preview update and once you're actually satisfied with how your image looks and what the script is doing to it, there's a couple of options here. You can execute, or if you find that the settings that you're using work on multiple data sets, you can actually grab the new instance button, drag it onto the workspace, and as you're going through your images, grab the icon and drop it onto the image, and the script will go ahead and run. Now, while this is running, what's happening when you increase or decrease those large scale, small scale sliders, you're actually adjusting the bias values for each layer. And I have it set to where the um, bias values proportionally adjust with each other. Now, a factor of five is exactly how I demonstrate multi-scale linear transform in my um, sharpening video. So that is gonna be five for both large scale and small scale. And again, as you move the sliders left, it's decreasing those values, thus less sharpening for each category. As you move the slider right, it is increasing those values, thus increasing the sharpening for each value. And here the script is done and we are sharpened and ready to move on with our workflow. So I hope you find the script useful. And if you do and wanna help support the channel, check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you and your support helps me bring you more tools and content. Another way you can help support the channel is checking out my High Point Scientific Affiliate link in the description of this video if you're in the market for some new gear. Also, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up? Hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Drop a comment in the comment section. How do you normally sharpen your image? Would you find the script useful? And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.